Alright, so a while back, I made this joke between a couple Cuphead YouTubers that I know that I was gonna make a mod that multiplied all boss HP by 10. This means that, for example, a boss on expert mode such as Calamaria <clears throat> would have around 30,000 health. And if 30,000 doesn't sound like a large amount of health, just, just shut up. Anyways, after talking with some people who are actually smart, the mod was created, and now it was time to actually beat it. Originally, I planned on having every single boss fight in one video. But after finishing all bosses in Inkwell Isle 1 and in Inkwell Isle 2, the video was over 40 minutes long. And yeah, I'm not making a 2 hour long YouTube video, so this is part 1 where we fight all Inkwell Isle 1 bosses. So without further ado, let's get into Inkwell Isle 1. But, before we can start this challenge, I obviously have to go over the rules. The rules for this challenge are very, very simple. I was gonna start from a new save file, and I was gonna beat every single Inkwell Isle 1 boss with the mod on, on expert mode. And yeah, that's, that's it. Obviously, massive shout out to GOTGM on YouTube for helping me create this mod. And also, if you wanna try out this mod for yourself, for some reason, you can go down to the description, and there's a download link there for you to try out. And of course, if you want to see Inqua Isle 2 for this challenge, let me know in the comments below, and also like the video. I don't have a like goal for this, just let me know that you want to see it. And without further ado, let's get straight into Inqua Isle 1. That's right, we've got to start off this challenge with the root pack. To start off this fight, I'm gonna do the obvious thing and take a hit so I can get some invincibility frames to go behind Mr. Potato Man so I can sit and shoot his nice potato. Hey! So this pretty much saves us from taking any damage in this phase. I know it's cheap, but I, I don't care. The only thing it doesn't save us from is the existential dread that we get when we remember that we've been doing this for three minutes already and he's not dead. But after way too long, we're done with this phase. Just to put into perspective how much HP this phase actually has, the ground boss with the most health is the Devil with 2,100, and this phase has 4,000. This means that this phase, and this phase only, almost has double the HP of the final boss. Our next phase up is the Onion phase with 4,250 HP. This phase isn't terrible, the only problem is it's really easy to take stupid damage, especially after 4 minutes of just sitting in a corner without any threat of taking damage. Most of the hits I took in this phase were just from miscalculating where the tears were actually gonna land. Like this one for example, it doesn't look like it's gonna hit me, but it ends up hitting me, and there's nothing I can do about that. I just tried to do as little movement as possible so I could stick close to him and use the spread shot since it deals the most damage. Now we're on to the third and final phase. Again, I used this spread shot for this phase because it's really good at taking out the carrots, and all I did was focus on dodging the laser beams. Unlike the last phases, I wouldn't save up a full super meter since I have Miss Chalice's double jump. I would just double jump and use the spread shot EX because it does a ton of damage if I hit all eight bullets. I had the strategy down perfectly, and it's not like this boss fight's extremely difficult, so it's just about being on this phase for a really, really long time. But finally, we're done with this boss fight, and it's time to go to the results screen. This is stupid. Yes! <laughs> Let's go! Oh my god, bro, that was stupid! That was stupid! <laughs> oh my god! What was that? <laughs> we have to sit for the whole timer, bro. What was that? Seven, almost eight minutes. Yeah, I should probably add this now. I made it a rule that I was never gonna skip a timer at the results screen. Yeah, I, I don't know. Anyways, I went and did treetop trouble for some extra coins, and then I of course bought the roundabout. I'll be comparing the HP and time it took to beat the boss fight for every single boss, so don't worry about that. We're on to the next boss, Goopy Legrand. That's right, our next boss is obviously Goopy Legrand. 
This boss fight's gonna be a little bit different because the first phase is no longer free. We're gonna have to actually try to not die here. Obviously, it's Goopy Legrand, so it's not gonna be terrible, but it's obviously not perfect. Starting off, we've got the first phase, which has 3,360 HP. What I'm gonna do for this phase is I'm gonna do the safe route, and I'm just gonna chase him around with a roundabout shot. I could chase him around with a spread shot, but I'd have to be really, really close up to him, and that could obviously lead to some stupid damage. So I'm just gonna chase him around with a roundabout shot, and then once he stops to do his lunge attack, I'm just gonna crouch underneath it and use the spread shot for tons of damage. And that's the first phase done. Luckily, that phase has had the least amount of HP so far, but the next phase has the most, so it doesn't even matter. Phase 2 has 5,600 HP, which is a lot. During this phase, he'll jump between 5 to 7 times before he does his punch attack. This is pretty much the exact same as phase 1, but bigger, which is why we're going to do the exact same strategy as phase 1. Like the last boss fight, pretty much the only time I take damage during this phase is when I do something stupid. For example, look at this hitbox. Like, what is that? Anyways, after a really long time of just doing the exact same thing over and over and over again, we're done with this phase. Now we're on to the final phase, and luckily for us... Yeah, no, this phase still has a lot of HP. 5,040 to be exact. Much like the first phase, I'm just gonna play it safe and chase him around with the roundabout shot. The problem with using the spread shot is, yes, it does a lot more damage, but if I accidentally get caught underneath him, I can take really easy damage, which I don't want to do because we've already been doing this boss fight for like 8 minutes. Since I'm doing whatever this is, now's probably a perfect time to say if you want to see all of these boss fights in full for some reason, you can go check out the playlist linked in the description, which is every single stream I did on this challenge. You know, after fighting with him for so long, he's, he's kind of my friend. I kind of like hanging out with him. Just kidding, I shot his grave to death. Oh, how are you not- YES! <laughs> Let's go! Oh my god, man. <laughs> uh. Nope. Are we gonna hit double digits? Let's go! And there we go. Second boss down, and now we have like a really, really big problem. Ah! My hand slipped off the thing! Now you might be wondering to yourself, so what's the solution to this problem? How, how are you gonna do that? Um, I don't know. Uh, maybe I'll like, try and use like, maybe a different shot or- Oh yeah, this works. So I originally tried doing this boss fight with the roundabout and the spread shot, but that absolutely sucks and I do not want to do that. So I went and got some more coins and I picked up the crack shot. And now that we have the crack shot, I present to you corner strats. The corner strat is the thing that I used for my Christmas video, but basically if I'm sat in this corner, no seeds can hit me. And since I have the crack shot, any plants that get spawned by seeds instantly get killed. And on the off chance that something doesn't instantly get killed, like the flying plant at the top, all I have to do is just jump and then it doesn't hit me with any projectiles, and we're still safe. This strategy takes way longer than doing it normally, since most of my bullets are hitting the plants instead of Cagney, but I mean I'm not dying. After a really long time of him doing the exact same attack over and over and over again, we're finally in the next part of the first phase. Now I should probably mention that this phase has 8,100 health, which yes, is almost equivalent to fighting the devil four times. Anyways, during this part, he switches from two different attacks. For the first attack, he does three mini attacks, which can be one of two variations, the seed attack or the boomerang attack. The seed attack can easily be dodged with Miss Chalice's double jump, and the boomerang attack can just be ducked under. The second attack he does is where he extends either on the top of the screen or the bottom of the screen. This is also really easy to dodge because he telegraphs it really, really clearly. But also, look at this dodge. Th this is pretty cool. But... Oh. Oh! Since we know the pattern of each attack, this part is really, really easy to do. And again, really the only problem is he has 8,000 health. 
But finally, we're on to the final phase, which is again pretty simple. He has two attacks that he does. One is where he attacks the platform you're on with vines, and the other one is where he shoots drug flowers at you. Like I said, this phase is pretty easy. I just want to watch what platform I'm on and make sure there's no vines coming on it. I also want to make sure there's no flowers coming across the screen, and that I don't dash in the wrong freaking direction. This phase has a lot less health than the last phase. It has 6,900, which... But, like, what's funny? I don't understand. I just use my roundabout EX as much as possible, since using my vertical super is pretty much useless. And other than that, it's just waiting, and we're done. Yes! Oh my god! Oh! <laughs> Ugh. 15 and a half minutes. Alright, now Cagney's down, and we have two more bosses left in Inkwell Isle 1, but they are absolutely terrible. But here's my plan. Beat both Ribby and Croaks and Hildeberg so I can get to Inkwell Isle 2, so then I can get to the second mausoleum and unlock Miss Chalice's Super Art 2. If you don't know, Miss Chalice's second super art is literally the best in the entire game, and it is the reason why this challenge was actually possible. Don't worry, once we beat the mausoleum, we're gonna go back and beat those two bosses on expert mode. Once we're in Inkwell Isle 2, we've got one more boss to beat on simple difficulty, and this is Jimmy the Great. After a 10 minute long fight on simple mode, we go to Mausoleum 2, finish it, now we've got super art 2, and it's time to go beat up some frogs. Alright, here's Ribby and Croak's first phase. This phase is pretty simple. They can only do one attack each, and that's absolutely it. Ribby will throw a pattern of fire punches at you, one on the bottom, one in the middle, one on the top, one in the middle, and then one on the bottom. This attack's really simple to dodge, all you have to do is jump, duck, and then jump again, and that's it. While Ribby's doing this, Croaks will also shoot out some Firefly minions, but they're really easy to kill with the spread shot, so they're not a big deal. During this phase, we get to see what Miss Chalice's second super art actually does. It's called the Shield Pal because once you have a full super, you can use it, and there's this little shield that floats up next to you, and it acts as an extra hit point. So basically, once we use our super art, the Shield Pal is just gonna stay there until we take damage. Once we do take damage, it's gonna take the hit for us and disappear instead of us losing any HP. You can only have one of these active at a time, but that's why this was so important. I could just save up my super and have a shield pal always ready for if I took damage. Which meant these super long fights weren't as difficult because I didn't have to constantly worry about my HP. Like I said, the attacks in this phase are pretty easy to dodge, and that combined with our shield pal and the fact that they only have 4,940 HP. I know it's a lot, but compared to Cagney it's nothing. Anyways, this phase was easy, and we're on to the second phase. The second phase is literally the complete opposite, because it has 7,410 HP. During this phase, Ribby can do two different attacks while Croaks tries to blow us. That, that, that sounds... Um, anyways. The first attack that Ribby can do is where he shoots bouncing orbs at us. These are pretty simple to dodge, I just have to walk back and forth to make sure I don't get hit by him. The other attack that he does is half of the fireball attack from the first phase. Other than that, it's just a really long phase. I'm gonna try my best to be as close to Croaks as I can and use my spread shot, because if I can get all the bullets to hit him, it does massive damage. And yeah, this phase is just really, really long, but it's easy, so hey, I'll take it. With that phase done, Croaks is gonna commit a legal act of cannibalism and turn into a slot machine. Now we're in the final phase, and it's even worse than the second phase. With 6,650 HP, it doesn't sound bad, but when you realize that I can only hit him during a specific amount of time, it sucks. If you didn't know, you can only damage the slot machine while it's attacking, so we have to parry the hand to deal any damage. You wanna know how many times I have to parry the hand? 20. 
During this phase, there's three different attacks you can do. The snake attack, yes, they're snakes, they have goddamn teeth. During this attack, you just have to jump between platforms. It's definitely the easiest attack. The next attack is the bull attack, which is pretty simple. There's just platforms with lasers that cut off either the top or the bottom of the screen. So all you have to do is pay attention to which way they're pointing and dodge them. The third attack, which is hands down the hardest attack, is the tiger attack. It's very similar to the snake attack, except each platform shoots out a ball that you have to dodge. But I have so much practice dodging these attacks, so it's not a big deal, and we got it done. Oh, let's go! I told you, bro, Super R2 didn't even take a hit. Not a single hit of damage. 4 HP. Come on, man. Oh my god! Oh my god, is it gonna be longer than Cagney? No. And even as difficult as that was, it's nowhere even near the next boss. Uh. No, man! Oh my god! That's right, that's how much damage we dealt to her in six minutes of just that phase. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm in hell. That's right, we've gotta fight our final boss of Inkwell Isle 1, and of course, it's gotta be Hildeberg. This fight has six different phases, but I'm only going to talk about four specifically because phases one, three, and five are the exact same. In total, phases one, three, and five have 9,000 HP in total, but they're really easy phases. The only thing that happens is Hildeberg shoots stuff at you and Zeppelins come from the right side of the screen and also shoot at you. In phases three and five, she gets a tornado attack, which is like a homing missile, but all you have to do is go into mini plane and go underneath it. But since this phase isn't interesting, now's the perfect time to talk about why my charm is the best. The charm I have equipped right now is the Heart Ring. I would get the Divine Relic, but it's way too hard to get in this mod. Anyways, the Heart Ring gives you HP back on your first, third, and sixth parry. So if you get six parries without taking any damage, you can have six HP instead of three. This is perfect for plane bosses because during plane bosses, you can't choose your super. You always have the nuke super, so I can't use Miss Chalice's second super. Which means any damage means I'm gonna have to stick with that amount of HP for the rest of the fight. And having double the amount of hits helps a lot. But now we get into the actual interesting phases, starting with the Gemini phase. We end up doing the Gemini and Sagittarius phase because we're on expert, so the Taurus phase doesn't exist. This phase is pretty simple. The Zeppelins from phase 1 are still here. The only thing that changes is the main attack. There's a big orb that spawns in the middle of the screen, which shoots in a random direction. It can either be clockwise or counterclockwise, and all we have to do is avoid it. Again, this phase is simple, although it is pretty easy to get caught in some stupid place and take damage. But luckily for this attempt, we didn't. The total HP for this phase in specific is 4,500 HP. I combine this with the fourth phase, the Sagittarius phase, which has 4,800 HP, to get the total amount of 9,300 HP that you saw in the intro. Speaking of the Sagittarius phase, it's pretty annoying. Again, the Zeppelins are still here, shooting at us, yet again. The main attack of this phase is a bow that gets shot at you, there's an arrow that comes out, and there's also three homing stars that come after you. My strategy for dodging them was always take out the bottom star, then do a loop and take out the other remaining two. This strategy worked most of the time, but if it didn't, I would use my super to try and blow the rest of them up. Overall, just a really long and annoying phase, because again, it's really easy to take some stupid damage. During the winning attempt, I did take damage on this phase, which meant I had 5 HP going into the 5th and 6th phase. Since the 5th phase is just the 3rd phase with a few more zeppelins, we're gonna skip straight to the 6th phase. Her 6th and final phase is definitely her most annoying phase. The reason behind this is because it lasts for so long. In this phase, she has 11,700 HP, which is just insane. 
comparing this to regular plane bosses, the most health a plane boss has is 3,000 on expert. And this phase almost has 12,000, meaning that this phase alone is basically four times the Hildeberg boss fight on expert mode. During this phase, there's stars that get shot at you from the right side of the screen, and there's also UFOs that go up above you, the brown ones you have to trigger early so you don't get hit by their laser, and the red ones you have to go past them to trigger them. All of this combines for a super annoying phase and super annoying boss fight. But finally, we're done. Although I might still do that for the DLC no moving because I... Oh, let's go! Let's go! Let's go! That's the longest boss so far. Yo! Ah, finally, we are done with Inkwell Isle 1. The ground boss with the most HP was, of course, Ribby and Croaks with 19,000 HP. And the ground boss that took the longest to defeat was Cagney Carnation with 15 minutes and 29 seconds. Obviously, the plane boss with the most HP was Hildeberg with 30,000 health. And Hildeberg was also the longest plane boss fight at 16 minutes and 8 seconds. And that does it for Inkwell Isle 1. I hope you enjoyed the video, and again, if you want to see Inkwell Isle 2, let me know in the comments below and like the video. Luckily, for the people who stayed to the end, I've got a big surprise for you. Hopefully next weekend, the sequel to the Five Nights at Freddy's Without Lights video will come out. I make no promises that it will actually come out on this time, because it's a really long video and it takes a long time to edit. But I'm working really hard to get that video out, and I hope you're excited. And as always, thank you all so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please leave a like and consider subscribing, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.